<laughs> oh, hi there. Oh, Ayaka! Guess who fulfilled all your wishes? Hmm. Huh? Ayaka! Huh? Huh? Using elemental energy without a vision. You are an exception, it appears. Exceptions, the enemy of eternity. You 
will be inlaid upon this statue. Shogun, who was that? Seize him under the decree. Huh? Next time, I will strike twice. <laughs> My lady. I just hope you can afford all these marks you've gathered. Kazuha! Oh, we meet again, old friend. Embrace the anger. Embrace it! The wrath of the gods fills this factory, and it feeds on your anger. <laughs> uh, what's happening? Get up! I'm a Snizhnayan diplomat. You know what happens if you lay a finger on I me. I swear, if you strike me, I will make sure. 
The Fatui will make sure that your precious Inazuma... Stop! I order you! And you! Filthy rats! All of you! You are the enemy of eternity. <laughs> but as the victor, I acknowledge your honor. Therefore, I shall allow you to leave Tenshukaku alive. There will always be those who dare to brave the lightning's glow. We meet again. <laughs> Dear me, aren't you cutting it rather close? Hmm? Miko, this was your doing? Now, now. Don't forget who taught you how to place your consciousness in objects. Surely you don't think your ambition alone is enough to shake A's will, do you? Though you alone are here, they too have ambitions, which they long since entrusted to you. Now then, close your eyes. We can abolish the vision hunt decree. When lightning flashes, it casts a shadow. My name means shadow. With my blade, I purged all obstacles to progress. And yet, something was lost with each step forward. In the end, I even lost her. The tales are still retold in the shade of every Thunder Sakura. But the wounds left on our nation by that terrible loss still ache. Never stop searching, even if only for a brief flash of light. If nothing else, we have the present moment. She said that once. But I've seen the nation strike forward 
and lose everything to the heavenly principles. Perhaps only if time stands still will the lightning's glow never fade. The present moment is a fragile illusion. Only eternity can bring us closer to the heavenly principles. I am no longer the shadow. Mine is the most supreme and noble form. Let power over the realm be vested within me. In this form shall I honor my subject's dream. For a land of eternity, unchanging forevermore. As promised, the Raiden Shogun abolished the Vision Hunt Decree. Finally, her people's wishes penetrated her locked heart. Beyond the plain of Euthymia, she saw what eternity means in the eyes of the world. When one's fervent ambition burns brightly, the gods will cast their gaze upon you. Some ambitions have the power to heal wounds, to bring victory, to inspire hope. But some ambitions outlive their masters long after the soul ascends. They remain as they were in the beginning. Burning bright and true for all eternity. Kujo clan's honor was forged with courage, tempered with integrity, and shines beyond life and death. Show me whether your blade can bear the weight of your name. Ready to learn, almighty Shogun. Another anomaly in eternity. Nevertheless, it appears that the Kujo honor still courses through your veins. Comrades, never trust the Kujo! Let's get them! <laughs> Protect Madame Kujo! <laughs> Number 16, no wait, 67, or is it 73? Uh, which one is it? Uh, 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 uh,
Machosius, god of the stove, born from a spark when stone struck stone. He was a god with a great love for humanity and their well-being. Millennia ago, the people sought to expand their city. They built a dwelling on the plains and called it the Gwaili Assembly. The stove god cared greatly for the people, turning himself into minions who went into every home, fostering food and solidarity alike. Alas, their home was taken by a flood. The waters ravaged the Gwaili Assembly and forced the people back south to Liyue Harbor. Though the distance was not far, the journey was plagued by a terrible storm. For a dozen days, the Adepti stayed by their side. During this time, the stove god cooked an ancient delicacy, flatbread with a meat sauce to stave off the cold and damp, fit for those on the move. Centuries later, disaster and plague arose once more. The Stove God would appear no longer, for he placed all of his power into the land itself to quell the calamities. His power expended and his wits greatly reduced, thus his body decreased in size. By the time he parted ways with us, he wasn't even the height of a human. He told Rex Lapis and I of the dishes that bring joy and of the secrets of the flame, then went into the mountains and entered into a long slumber. The stove god departed and Guoba was born. When he awoke, he ate the chili men's cornbread buns placed on the offering table by a young lady in yellow. Though he did not remember the past, he was profoundly moved and decided to follow this young lady thereafter. The stove god had quietly disappeared, but the vendors rose early to hawk their wares. People went out to buy goods, lit their stoves and cooked food, just as they had done every day for as long as they could remember. In Liyue, things have always been this way. Nature provides, the mountains rejoice, we are blessed by heaven's good grace. Years have gone by. The world has transformed. But our way of life survives. Fame and fortune is only a season. It is the moment that we should embrace. Past meets present. Heritage becomes legacy. Long into the future may we thrive. Half our trained samurai are wounded, and our shikigami losses are far greater than anticipated. Besides, the outside situation is beginning to stabilize. Do we really need to keep pursuing this ultimate attainment? Why so apprehensive? This is all within my expectation. Aronosuke, forgive my directness, but she's not coming back. All I ever wanted was to assist her descendants and guard this territory. Now that our targets no longer exist, and those needing our protection are finally safe, then perhaps our sworn mission has indeed come to an end. I always believed that I would stand guard in this place forever, if time permitted. I almost fooled myself with such a notion. I hope you never make the same mistake. 
Don't worry, Haranosuke. I know everything that you've done for Inazuma. Your efforts need not be judged by others. The same goes for my existence. <laughs> Bestowing you with intelligence that you should know human emotion, it would seem this was the right decision. In the end, it is you that have enlightened me. Rosy-cheeked in the morning, bleached bones by dusk. How oh, so very true. I have nothing left to keep me. Shiki Taisho, my friend, you have completed your assignment magnificently. As for me, I need wait no longer. I will set out again in search of a new purpose. Then this is farewell, Harunosuke. Be safe in your travels. Huh? remember everything. Haranosuke didn't abandon me. It was I that persuaded him. <sighs> and helped him escape the labyrinth of his heart. I flipped another insignia just outside the camp. Wrong again. So your bad luck is all used up. We'll be down the mountain in no time. <laughs> yeah, my thoughts exactly. Today's the day. My 
story. Yes, I should have known. Master's failed specimen in the dragon's belly. This is where the story truly begins. <laughs> if we switched places, if you were the survivor, then as the abandoned experiment, the failure of the primordial human project, I'd want to replace you too. I would replicate your appearance, study your alchemy, and create miraculous life forms to divert your attention. I would wait for the right moment, then dispose of you and the Traveler, the sole person to have known your secret. And then, I could finally experience the joy of being brought into the world. A long, long time ago, in a village lost to time, there lived a crimson oni and a blue oni. They were the best of friends. The crimson oni looked fierce, but was gentle like the humans. The blue oni looked human, but was reclusive, like an oni. The crimson oni wished to befriend the humans, but they were scared and threw beans at him whenever he came near. <laughs> so the blue oni said to the crimson oni, Akka, I'll cause trouble in the village. You come and stop me. Then the humans will accept you. As planned, the Crimson Oni chased the Blue Oni away. The Crimson Oni's deeds spread throughout the land, and people finally accepted him. But when the Crimson Oni went to tell the Blue Oni the good news, he was gone and left only a letter behind. I went traveling. Don't come find me or they'll treat you as a naughty little Oni. But don't worry about me. No matter where I go, we'll always be friends. Take care of this. There are still people in danger. Go, help them. What? <laughs> hey, I got this. Come on! <laughs> Forget about me! Just go! It's what I deserve! Ah, oh, shut up, would ya? A long, long time ago, in a village lost to time, there lived a crimson oni and a blue oni. They were the best of friends. The crimson oni wanted to be friends with the humans, so the blue oni played the role of the naughty kid. And then he left. After a long time, the crimson oni was living happily with the humans, but in his heart, he wanted to bring the Blue Oni back home. The Crimson Oni didn't know where to find the Blue Oni. His search took him up the highest mountains and across the widest rivers. He found many traces of the Blue Oni, but the more he found, the clearer it became. The Blue Oni was hiding on purpose. So just as the blue oni had once done, the crimson oni left him a letter. Dear Owl, I've made lots 
lots of human friends now, and I want to have a big party for everyone. I want all my friends to be there. That means you too, Al. If you don't want to meet me, you can just watch from a distance. The blue Oni snuck back to the village and hid in the shadows. He saw the great feast and roaring fire and longed to join in. But though his stomach rumbled, the blue Oni remembered the oath of old and kept his distance. Suddenly, he jumped. The crimson Oni was right behind him. <laughs> hey, you're finally back. Come on, I'll introduce you. It's time everyone met my best friend. Avenger of the Vortex, Beisht. Who is that? Osile's wife. Final follower of the Overlord of the Vortex. Sounds like you knew this was coming! Beto sensed something was stirring in the deep. She warned me months ago. Knowing she harbors hatred toward the Jade Chamber, I chose to rebuild it now as a way of drawing her out. Got it. Well, <clears throat> let's go fetch the Adepta. No. Huh? In this human age, the people of Liyue must find a way to overcome this crisis on our strength alone! Child, your life brings nothing but disaster to us all. At least if you die, I can bring her back. The day you learn how to use your strength for the good of others is the day that you can truly become part of human society.
这里本该接近尾声，但今日我再添一笔，唱与祝。茫茫天地无依靠，孤身离去。今日再会，新朋旧友坐满堂，共聚此时。For a moment, don't go anywhere. Huh? Must be something important. Ningguang had her personal tailor make it for me. Said it's an imported style. Well, do you like it? Wow, it's beautiful! <laughs> it's time, traveler. Please enjoy the grand finale of this year's lantern rite, the fireworks show. Check you out. Looking pretty fancy. Only a true treasure catches the eye of Captain Beto. Seems I've struck gold with this one. Baiju, sorry to trouble you again this year. <laughs> no trouble at all. Uh, lantern right. <laughs> Happy lantern right. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Happy lantern right. <laughs> Torn 
to oblivion! Remember to focus constantly on your heartfelt wishes when you enter inside. Only if you are strong enough can I deliver you to the right destination. that blesses the people, in this moment new to the world and yet to be known. When to plant it, where it shall bloom, she who brings it into being must let her heart and dreams decide. Grant it life, eh? Is this... is it really? Eternity extends time into infinity. Dreams illuminate each moment within. When both shine in unison, the sacred Sakura blooms from the darkness, finally free from the clutches of the heavenly principles. Now the nightmare has dissipated, and reality is made whole. The vision we both yearn for is still further ahead. My only regret is that I cannot witness Inazuma's future. Nor can I walk this journey with you. <sighs> Do you know, A? Eh? I am so happy right now, because my final wish has now come true. Your polearm once protected me from countless calamities. For this, I've always felt indebted to you. Though I could never repay you in full, this sacred Sakura will buy you some time until you are ready to awaken and embrace the new. What do you think? Did it do the trick? <laughs> this time, it really is goodbye, eh? <sighs> goodbye, Makoto. Memories of the yokai. They haven't been able to relax and soar through the air like this for a long time. Come with me. You all right, little one? You look a little nervous. It's just, Paimon's never seen anything like this before. They've really blocked out the moon! It does look a little intimidating, doesn't it? But I know them. They may be loud and brash at times, but they are good and brave souls. Even after losing their lives in a brutal war, they have never given in to grief or despair. Alas, their time is short. Really have 
to go? It's a feast, and all feasts come to an end. <laughs> Since you're sorry to see them leave, why don't you do the recital along with me? Oh, Hakushin, cause of this enchantment. In reverence, I perform this rite. In reverence, I perform this rite. To be a guiding light. Recite the secret spells of Lady Kitsune tonight, and our wishes will come true. <gasps> oh, Hakushin, cause of this enchantment. I perform this rite to be a guiding light. Your unrivaled power will be honored eternally. Kusai, you asked if I was doing well. Really, every day is a happy day for me. But watching you all leave now, I can't help but feel a little lonely. Mm. Just a little, of course. The amplification device.
apologies, Captain Dainsliff, Twilight Sword. Back then, I failed you, and failed to protect our people. <laughs> no. For 500 years, you have faithfully done your duty. To this day, I am proud of you all. <sighs> Conria didn't fall, did it? Since you're still here. Correct. <laughs> so, no need to revive the homeland. Without looking at the board, you've ruined my strategy in one move. Amazing. Hmm. Now what should I do next? Ayaka, Toma, it says! Huh? Oh. <laughs> hey guys, it's been a while. If you're looking for my lady, I'm afraid she's not here right now. Oh. Huh? That voice. Toma, would that happen to be the Traveler? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Greetings, Traveler. Ayaka speaks of you constantly. Finally, today is the day. I am head of the Kamisato clan and Yashiro commissioner, Kamisato Ayato. Long ago, Inazuma had five legendary poets. People bestowed upon them the title of the Five Kasen. One year, the poet Suiko made his way to Tenchukaku and presented the Kasen's work for the Shogun's perusal. But a page from the works of Aoi no Okina had been torn out, and Suiko was questioned regarding the matter. Suiko pleaded guilty. He admitted to drinking at the tavern the night before, and vaguely recalled a mysterious figure approaching while he was intoxicated. That figure was none other than Aoi no Okina himself. This turn of events had begun with an unnamed individual, under whose coercion, Aoi no Okina was forced to take drastic measures to retrieve a page of poetry. He knew nothing of this individual's true intentions. All he knew was that the poem had to do with an old acquaintance, Akahito. Akahito had once belonged to the Five Kasen. Each poem he composed, he marked with a scarlet red seal, hence the Aka in his name. Such a distinguished writer was he, and yet one of the poems he had submitted the previous year was found to be plagiarized. Akahito was exiled for his crimes, and only four of the five Kasen remained. Sumizome went over Akihito's poems and noticed that the plagiarized poem lacked his seal. She immersed his poetry in a stream nearby. And only on the plagiarized poem did the ink run. Aoi no Okina passed by and witnessed Sumizome's doing, which he then recorded in a poem. Thus transpired the events of Suiko's poetry submission, and this is where the story comes to an end. Have a taste of this! Uh, uh, whew, okay, so I didn't tear the whole place down. <coughs> but check it out, new path. <laughs> if you need a hero, I'm the man for the job. Should have seen this coming.
stars align, bestow your light, evil purged by thunder's might. Spirit curbed, Numa surge, by dictum divine, heed these words. Do as I command! Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. The fantastic compass is an amplifier. Maintain this energy level and we may stand a chance. I will maintain the energy flow. Understood. Everyone, stand back. I shall hold the line by sealing the surface. As Yaksha's, we must fight for this world. General Alatus, pulling in! Watch out! This trip may be dangerous, yet you insist on going. I have guarded this place for several hundred years. Only to seek the nameless Yaksha do I request your approval. Hmm. <laughs> Nogius, where have you been? <sighs> Brother Yaksha, you're confused again. I've told you countless times, I am Boyang, a thaumaturge who fought with you in the chasm. Boyang? Boyang? You are Boyang, but who am I? <laughs> Believe me, I want to know as much as you do. Here we are, the two who agreed to stay here together, and I can't even call you by your name. It's a shame. Stay here? No. No, you have to leave. Uh, nonsense, Brother Yaksha. We're down here for good now. Don't you remember? It's too late to have regrets. The seal can't be broken. The seal... Ah, oh, yes. I'm 
a Yaksha who came here to fight. Brother, brother, are you okay? <laughs> Look at the state of me. I don't think I've got long now. <laughs> We're the only two left. Don't go dying on me. <sighs> you know, today I saw my family down here. Clear as day. What do you think? Am I losing my mind now, too? Hmm. Boyong, do you want to go home? I made my decision to leave Zhong Zhao up on the surface. I obviously... <sighs> of course I want to go home. I must have... family, too. You mean brothers and sisters? I'm sure you do. Brothers and sisters... Yes, but who am I? And where is my family? Brother! What's wrong? Hang in there. It's just you and me, don't... Don't die before me. Alatus, Is that you? Who's Alatus? Your memory's going again. <coughs> I'm sorry. You all have to see me in this state. Brother! Brother! Look. There's... Someone over there. Who are they? There. They're my. My. I remember now. I know you. <laughs> My brothers and sisters have come for me, Boy Yang. You're... you're awake? At least... at least tell me your name! Brother! Brother Bosatius! <laughs> hey, Bosatius. <laughs> Bosatius. I... I am Bosatius, and my destiny is to make... The ultimate sacrifice! Life is like fishing. It cannot be rushed. Whatever you do, impatience will accomplish nothing. I was just like you once. Desperate to prove myself. Only later did I realize things do not always turn out the way you plan. But you have to keep calm to carry on. You're still young. Be patient, believe in yourself, and don't look outside yourself to prove your value. <coughs> Where's Jury these days? It's been a long time since he last paid me a visit. <laughs> Maybe he's just busy. <laughs> well, next time, if he doesn't bring a pot of piping hot fish soup, don't let him in. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you were thinking about, you'll have plenty of time to mull it over in prison. Oh, I almost forgot. If the Fatui find out what happened today, Prison might not turn out to be the safest place for you. Trying to have friends on both sides, it has a way of turning everyone against you. But right now, I have an opportunity for you. Huh?
often travel during storms, which means my eyes are often blinded by the rain. Many times, I couldn't even see what was right in front of me. One day, I finally reached the top of the mountain. I looked out with the clouds beneath my feet and only the gentle breeze murmuring in my ears. The highest mountain is a clear and enlightened heart. Here, there is no self, no hatred, no regrets, and no desires. Let's embark on a journey, for I am the breeze. We will meet again, no matter how far along the road. Life has just begun, and maybe the whole world can be my home. One stormy night, a girl found a way to the future in the library. She said to herself, I shall create my dream kingdom. I'll carve mountains and oceans and erect castles and towns. Then she spoke to those who shared her dream. Please be proud of all that is unreal, for we are greater than this world. For our magnificent kingdom is a small and forbidden paradise. There was a transparent bird made of crystal. It was beautiful and fragile and could sing the most beautiful songs. But since mortals couldn't see it, they believed it to be a trick. How could a transparent bird possibly exist, let alone sing? When the bird heard that, it flapped its wings and flew across mountains and seas all the way to the night sky, where it turned into a star. Its brilliance was so dazzling that it illuminated everyone. It allowed all those that could see it to follow its light through the dark night to sail through the seas under the guidance of the stars. It was born in wisdom, but trapped in ignorance. It has never voiced a complaint, for this is its destiny. Guiding people to see their destinies is the very meaning of its existence. <laughs> 